Well, hey everyone, welcome back. And I'm glad to have you here. I'm Angie, and this is Be A Warrior Podcast. Today, I was like outside, it's so gorgeous out. I'm hoping where you're at, that your weather is starting to change from winter into a spring. Hopefully not a messy spring, but here in Arizona, we are now in the 70s. It's fabulous, and we're praying that it stays 70s, 80s for a while, because 70 in our sun is actually quite warm. Um, but I just wanted to get on today. This There's some things that have been going on lately, and I'm noticing a pattern. And I thought, you know what, this is, this is something that's worth bringing up and talking about and, and, and just bringing to the forefront of people's minds. Because you know what, what I'm noticing lately is there's a lot of people out in the world suffering, a lot of people that have problems of their own. And I'm not talking just amputation, I'm talking in, in general. And I am noticing that there's a lot of people that feel very alone. And this is definitely a topic for discussion because one, you're never alone. But in the darkness and in the night and in the um, the throes of pain and suffering, we feel very alone, even if we are surrounding ourselves with people. And you've seen people do that. They can go to gatherings and parties, go out to restaurants, and still feel completely alone because we are suffering alone. We feel the pain alone. And it's really hard to get out of that feeling and to see what actually is in the world for us. And I bring this up because you know, today I'm alone. I have my dogs. Uh, I talk to them a lot, which is frightening. This is coming from a mom who actually homeschooled her boys all through school. And I'm used to having people around that I can talk to. And I might be walking into the laundry room and still talking to someone who's working in the kitchen. And you know what? That hasn't even gone away. I can go to the grocery store alone and I'll say, excuse us as I walk by people. And I'm sure people are looking at me and then look behind me and try to figure out who the us is because I'm so used to having two boys in tow and um, always around me. So it's kind of funny that I still have that habit. Um, and, and just, I'm not, I don't like being alone myself. I mean, there's times that it's great and I enjoy the quiet. Um, I'm not as productive when I'm alone. And um, so when I'm around my family, I feel like I get more done when I know that my husband's going to come home from work at a certain time, certain things have to be done so that I have dinner ready and things going on and laundry picked up and dog toys not all over the place. Because if you don't know, we have a new puppy. And so I've got a puppy down here at the foot of where I'm sitting, sleeping. That's the puppy puppy. And my two-year-old over here in a chair next to me, that is her domain, and this one can't get up there. So I'm, again, never alone, and I talk to my dogs all the time. But <clears throat> when it comes to going through <clears throat> hard moments, people can't figure out why they feel so alone. One, we sometimes get abandoned by the people around us. Truly, we are. Um, I've talked to many people that have said, I don't understand while I'm in the midst of all of this, why my best friends or who I thought were my best friends are no longer there. And maybe all of us have gone through that at some point in time by no fault of your own. And sometimes what you're not seeing is something you're doing. So <clears throat> what I'd like to use today to talk about is how our humans need to connect that is, that is what we're meant for. We are not meant to be isolated creatures. We are meant to be social and active, even if we are introverted, <clears throat> which I am not. Um, but when we feel that aloneness, we need to find out if it's perceived aloneness or true aloneness. And the only way to do that is really to get out of our own selves. We get stuck in a rut. And what we're doing is we're looking on the inside and and realizing that no one around me, my friends, my family, they don't know what I'm going through. They don't understand. They have no idea how it feels. Yada, yada, yada. We talk to ourselves that way internally. And that makes us feel separated and alone. But on the other hand, is that truly happening? And are you communicating? Like I do have a husband and boys. My boys are off in college and my husband comes home from work every day 
some days he works out of his home office. And I can feel very alone in that knowing he's right here, but unavailable or has no idea that I'm going through phantom pains, let's say. But unless I tell him that I feel that way, he won't know that him being within the same building all day with me is actually making me feel alone. Okay, get where I'm going with this. Now, on the other side of that spectrum is when you truly are alone and you don't have someone in your home with you. And I do talk to a bunch of people that do live alone, amputees that live alone. That's a hard life. Um, every day can bring new challenges. Our fit changes all the time. Um, just knowing people that are dealing with fitting issues two years after amputation. So just because you might see someone out moving around in their prosthetic doesn't mean that's what most of the world of amputee life is like. There is a lot of people that really struggle with mobility. And I don't mean just moving in their prosthetic. I mean fitting in it and wanting to be in it and feeling good or comfortable or themselves in it. And when that happens, they get closed off from the world and they are at home and, and stuck at home. So if you are supporting someone who is an amputee or you know someone in your neighborhood who is, you might wanna check up on them every once in a while to see how things are going. Even for me, like I'm always active. My neighbors see me all the time. And now with a puppy, I have to take at least two walks a day. So I'm out in the neighborhood all the time talking to people. But that does not mean that when you don't see me, I'm not home fighting phantom pains or phantom sensations or um, a sore from my prosthetic and how it rubs from the walk. So it's okay to reach out to some people that look like they're being successful in their prosthetic because even the best of us that look like we've got it all together have bad days and sometimes feel alone. Um, and it's human nature, right? We are, like I said, we are people that need, we are a creature, a living being that needs to have connection. And whether it's with an animal that does count or somebody that can intellectually inspire us to become more and think harder and deeper and longer about things and, and bring up topics that we can discuss and problems to solve. That's just what we are as human beings. Now, when we don't connect or we feel we've been left, there are two sides to that. Yes, there are people that cannot handle others that are going through strife and the best of friends can show their true colors in the midst of your struggles. And they will turn away and go with an easier path, someone that can go out and do coffee and shop and do hikes and bike and whatever. And if you're not in that place, you no longer serve a purpose for them. And that is sad because it is really nice when those friends stick by us through thick and thin. And this is a phase when you're struggling to go through amputation and struggling with fits and going through the ups and downs day-to-day -day life of being an amputee, that's when we need our tribe the most. We need the people around us that know us and love us for who we are, even in our darkest hours. But some people are not wired that way and quite frankly are a little self-centered because all they think about is what their needs are not getting met by you. Right now, you're not meeting that need for me. I need to go someplace else. They aren't thinking the flip, like I was feeling a need for you. I should be there for you. Like I said, though, there's two sides to that coin. Are you abusing that relationship? And we have seen that happen. And sadly enough, I, you know, I'm speaking as an above knee amputee and as a woman. Women tend to be very competitive with each other but they also have very low tolerance at times with each other. And if you are abusing a relationship by asking too much, and I digress to say you've become a whiner, but that is the angle it starts to look to your friends or relatives or, or family, that you are becoming the victim. 
that's maybe a better way to say it. You're becoming a victim of your situation. And yeah, I, I mean, I have an amputation. I'm not a victim. One, I chose it. Some of you I know did not choose your path, but you can choose your outcome. Are you a victim? Are you a warrior? And this podcast is meant to bring the warrior out in you and stop yourself from becoming a victim. Victim, A victim life is not a pleasant life. It is a very alone life. People are going to lead you left and right if you are showing victim mentality because they can see you're stronger than that and they can see where your pitfalls are. But if you are someone that's got that victim mentality, you tend to not want to see that negative side of you. And so everybody else is wrong but you. And it has happened. I have seen friendships destroyed because of that. And that's a shame because on the victim mentality side is, of course, she left me or he left me because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm struggling and I needed them the most and they've, they've left. They're, they're bad people. They're not my friends. They never were my friends. I guess I was wrong. But what the friend is seeing is someone that's using, abusing the relationship and you're not trying to better yourself. You're not trying to get out of that hump. You're staying in that darkness and you're wallowing in it. And you're not trying to, to reach for anything bright and, and positive. You're just, it's always negative. It's always bombarding. And you have to remember something. Your friends are going through things too. And they need you even when you're struggling. So what I've always told people is, just because I'm an amputee and having maybe a bad day with my fit or phantom pains or whatever, doesn't mean I should sit there. As a matter of fact, this is the best time to get out and help a friend in need. Because when you take your view off of your struggles and go out and help someone with theirs, you will notice that your struggles become less and less and aren't as intense and aren't as, an oft, as often because you are now putting yourself out in the world to help. And that is like a really, I always say it's a distraction technique for me. I use a lot of distraction when I'm feeling miserable. When my phantom pains especially are succumbing, uh, that make me succumb to just a woe is me attitude or a, I can't do anything right now attitude. I actually get out of my house. I go for the walk, even though I don't want to or it hurts. I go for the car ride. I go get a coffee. I get out of the house. I call a friend. I call my family back home. Anything to change what I'm thinking and feeling so I can move forward instead of being stuck in a woe is me place. So like I said, there's two sides to the coin with a friend leaving. Have you been the friend for them? Because just because you're going through something doesn't mean they've stopped going through something. And we all know, if you really are watching people around you, everyone has an issue, everyone has a problem, and we all have bad days. It doesn't matter if it's medical or not. Emotional, physical, mental, doesn't matter. We all struggle. And some of our struggles are very obvious, like my amputation is obviously a thing, you can see it. But there are other people going through internal struggles and your friend might be going through that and you've been stuck on yourself thinking the world revolves around you and what you're going through, but really the world keeps going and people still go through issues and get tripped up. So going back to, to connection, we need the connection. Did you know you do not have to physically connect with someone like going out and getting coffee with a friend? Sometimes all it takes is a virtual chat or a phone call to connect, to know, let someone know that you are there for them. Um, just recently we had some people that were really struggling in a group that I have. I have a, a chat group for women and love them to death. They have been a blessing that I never knew I needed, um, but I'm really excited that I have them. We had a couple that were really struggling with fit and relationships recently, and I just called an emergency chat room so that we could be there for one another, and that was really phenomenal. Even though we, we couldn't hug or touch or support physically, we could see each other, we could talk it out, we could be heard, we can be good listeners. 
despite what the other ones, and we are all amputees. So just despite being an amputee, we know within our amputee group, there are other struggles that happen. And it may not be about being an amputee. It may just be life, right? Just because I'm an amputee doesn't mean I don't have emotional ups and downs. It doesn't mean that I don't have a bad day with, you know, worried about my kids and what direction they're going or my husband and his job or a neighbor who's struggling or a family member that um, is, is getting sick. We have our own struggles too. Besides our physical disability, we have struggles too. And so within our amputee community, we are there for one another. And ladies, that's what it should be about. It shouldn't be about shoving somebody down and shutting them up so that we can rise above and step on them to get someplace. It should be picking each other up together to be united in what commonalities we do have despite our differences. And that is the best way to be there for one another. And I have found that just opening the door to being a listener is the best medicine for so many people. Because surprisingly enough, for someone who loves to talk, that would be me, that's the reason for the podcast, because I can talk, um, sometimes we need to learn to shut up and just open our eyes, give someone our full attention, put down the phone, put down the distractions, put everything aside and listen. Because for some people, they don't have anybody that listens. If they're in a relationship where the other person does all the talking, again, that would be me. I'm the extrovert. My husband's more the introvert. I'm the talker. And there are times where I have to be quiet because even though he is a man of few words, when he does need to speak, I tend to jump in and I have to stop because he needs that connectivity too that's not work-related, but relational-related. So... When we talk about human connection, you know, this week, you know, I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but this week with our call to action, it's time to step out of your mentality. If you are playing the victim, aren't you tired of being there instead of being the warrior, the survivor, the the one who's triumphed over adversity, because that's what the warrior mentality is, that you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get your legs taken from underneath you or taken away in my case. Um, and you need to learn how to stand back up and get moving no matter what. You know, I have come to the realization that I don't know if I've blocked it or what, but this is my life, missing leg and all. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be things that are going to be hard to adapt to, like having a puppy getting up in the middle of the night and not going to the door and having to pick him up with crutches and one leg. You have to adapt. You don't just say, well, I can't have a puppy because I couldn't take him out at night. It's hard. My husband travels and I've had to do those nights, but we've made it work. And if there's an accident, there's an accident. So what? But are you going to be the victim? Or are you going to start standing up for yourself and literally rising up to the occasion and showing the world what you're made of? Because you are more than what your disability or your physical appearance is. You're more than, you know, what you are struggling with. That isn't who you are. That is not what makes you. Your struggle isn't what makes you, but it is what can build you up. It is what can help define you if you allow yourself to get knocked down, rise up, get knocked down, rise up. Because each one of those knocks you take is what creates a bigger, better, stronger you. You are going to find that you have more grit than you ever thought you had when you go through something hard. And no matter what people tell you, and no matter what advice someone will give you that's gone through something similar or the same, until you've experienced it for yourself, you don't know what you need to do for you, how you handle pain, how you handle um, adversity, how you handle the struggles, the challenges, the pain, the struggles of, of adapting to the new world that you're in. And what someone else struggled with, you may not. And what someone else overcame, you may struggle with. So when you can connect to people, 
it's it opens up optionality. It opens up um, the support that you might need, but it also is an opportunity for you to reach out to someone that needs connection. And I would really advise this week as you're called to action, if you are a victim or you're in a victim mentality, it's time to put that down. It's time to say no more. It's time to stand up for yourself and start plugging forward and changing the mindset. And when you change that mindset from victim to warrior or survivor, you are all of a sudden going to realize what kind of light you're going to put out in the world, what kind of positivity, and you're going to see people gravitate towards you because you no longer are the person people are trying to push away because they're so over, blah, 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 all the negative that you're putting out, and they're going to start wanting to spend time with you. And you will be surprised that when you change that mindset and then you start connecting with people, people are going to start gravitating and connecting to you. So it's a win-win. You not only are helping someone, they're going to help you by connecting. And I have seen this. Like I said, the last five years since my amputation, I have enjoyed all the experiences and all the people and all the unique relationships I have gained from this have, have really kind of kept cycling. When I get down, boom, someone's there. It's weird. Like, it's almost like they know when maybe there's a bad day happening, but you're trying your best because I'll get, I'll put my big girl pants on and I will get out to the gym and I will put a smile on my face, even despite the pain. And the next thing I know, someone will say something, something to me and I don't waste the opportunity to talk with them because I know they were put into my life and that moment for a reason. And I want to see where it goes. And I will talk to people. I will then ask them about their journey and I will find out what they've gone through. And guess what? All of a sudden, my connection with them has filled my bucket and I walk out of that gym, out of that grocery store, out of wherever I'm at with a new step in my, um, my walk and a new lightness to my body. Like I have just shed the weight of the world the, that I was putting on myself because I was going through something that I couldn't handle alone internally. So get out there this week. There are people, even when you don't even think about it, there are people in your neighborhood or in the, the places that you frequent often that are in desperate need for human connection. And like I said, it can be simply a call, a text, a video chat, it could be a face-to-face, -face. it could just be a smile in a parking lot. It doesn't take much for some people that are in a desperate place to feel connected to another human being. So instead of scowling at someone because they cut you off in line or in traffic, instead of being frustrated where your parking spot is when you go to the store, smile. Just, just show the world a smile and you'll be surprised how that reverberates back to you. Human connection is very important. We need it. We all need it. There is no one here in this lifetime that will ever say, I don't need ever to talk or be with someone. And I'm talking from experience because I know I'm an extrovert, but like I said, my husband needs very little human connection, but even still like his love language is touch. So we all need that, that hug, that reassurance, that eye contact. Eye contact is a human, human connection that I think goes very unnoticed in the world anymore because everything is electronic and digital. But when we actually do what I call active listening, it's when we drop everything around us to let the person know that's in our conversation, in the parking lot, on a virtual chat, that I am watching you, I see you, and I hear you. When I start looking around and doing other things, I'm not really telling you you're important, am I? I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know that there's other things that have my attention, but I'm, I'm listening. That's not what people need. 
They need mouths closed, eyes up, hands to our side, and just good old fashioned listening. I think we've gotten away from that in this society so much these days that we've forgotten how powerful active listening can be. So get out there this week, be an active listener, be someone who supports somebody else. Send a smile, a, uh, a phone call, just be there. And you'll be surprised who will then in turn be there when you need it. We need human connection. We need human touch. We need to experience. That's part of humanity. That's part of our DNA. And that's who we are as living creatures and living beings. And that could just be connecting with your pup at home, your horse, whatever it is that you have, your cat. I'm sorry, I'm not a cat person. I used to be, but we don't have cats. Everybody in my family is allergic. But get out there and, and change the dynamics. I mean, I know there was a couple topics in this one, but you know, I think they go hand in hand. If you're a victim and you're talking about how people pull away from you, that has a lot to do with human connection. You can talk to people all you want, but if what your message is, is negative, 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 woe is me, woe is me, oh no, my life sucks, my life this, you have to understand that the person you are saying that to is probably going through something as well, and they've chosen not to speak that way because they know the negative isn't something that's gonna help them survive it. So make sure that you are checking in on your friends, make sure that a healthy relationship is a give and take. You're not just taking all the time, you're also giving. And when you change that view from you to the people outside of you, you're gonna see that come back to you for what you need when you need it. So get out there in this world, do good, send light into this world. We need it, we need the connection. Be an active listener. Don't forget the person that you keep saying, oh, one of these days I'm gonna call them, I'm gonna get in touch with them. Do that today. Go out and call someone today that you've been meaning to talk to, an old friend, a family member that doesn't live with you anymore. You don't know, even if you know that their life is okay, you'd be surprised if you get a tug in your heart to connect with someone, I would really highly suggest you do it. The times that that has kind of been brought to my attention, I have noticed that that was the moment someone really needed it and there was just something in the universe that let me know that that was important. Or I've had people reach out to me I haven't heard in a long time and I was like, oh, I don't really wanna answer this call but I probably will, I should, and I'll talk and I'll get off the phone and be like, that is exactly what I needed. How did they know? I just, I believe that if we are listening to our hearts, that messages are sent from the heart through the universe and what we need from each other. Be that connection for someone who is in dire need today. They need you just like you need them. Human connection, don't, don't, don't undervalue what that is especially if you're alone. If you are alone right now, I suggest you just get on a, on a phone and call someone, talk to someone, reach out to them, check and see if they're available, uh, DM them, see if they're available for a chat. You can get on anywhere at any time from anywhere over the world and see someone just like this at any given time you need it. And you'd be surprised how many times they need it too. So, I hope you have a fabulous week. I hope you make that human connection that you so desperately need and you may not know it. And I know you're gonna do something great for someone in this world this week. Let me know how it goes. Connect, make sure that you're an active listener, make sure you're talking to people. Send out a hug, a virtual hug, a real hug. We need the, the touch, the connection. And until next week, and as always, be healthy, be happy, be you.